Gonna, what do you think? Should people do ball games, split squats? Ah! This is where we spend a lot of our time. What do you think of the Bulgarian split squat? What do you think? Is it worth it? Not worth it? What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverSafe.com, and today I want to talk to you guys about making a case for the Bulgarian split squat. Now, if you have absolutely no idea what the Bulgarian split squat, it is pretty much just a squat with one leg where the other leg is on something. So I guess the first thing you can notice is that you are squatting on one leg. Now, that by nature makes it unilateral leg work, which I think is completely underprogrammed and underappreciated in the strength world for a ton of reasons I'm gonna get into. Now, you guys know that I absolutely love the walking lunge, the barbell walking lunge. I love step ups. However, I think you can cheat those a lot. Most people, when they're coming out of a lunge or a step up, are using a lot of momentum, trying to lean forward, trying to swing that weight, which number one is sticking you in kind of a compromised position as far as knee health and life health goes. However, on the other hand, if you're not cheating, you're not really trying. And so as much as I absolutely love the walking lunge and the barbell step up, I wanna to talk to you guys today about the Bulgarian split squat because all of that cheating kind of gets taken out. Now, there are a ton of benefits to doing the Bulgarian split squat that I'm not gonna cover them all today, but a couple that I really, really like are that number one, it teaches you balance underneath load, which is massively important for something like powerlifting or strongman or really any athletic thing at all. Number two, you're on one leg. Most of your life, you're on one leg, especially during athletic endeavors. And if you can only do strong, powerful things off of two legs, you're probably looking at an ACL injury or something else. And speaking about knee problems, this is also gonna help you with your knee tracking because you're not gonna have a choice other than keep your legs straight up and down, otherwise you're gonna fall over. This is going to do a ton to bring up your glute strength. Most people's glutes are not firing. I know you think they are, but they're probably not. It's also gonna work your hip flexors, which a lot of people are not doing enough of, especially if you're a strong man with a carry event, your hip flexors are massively, massively important. And then also we're gonna talk about core stability because if you're on one leg under load and you're trying to stabilize that, it's a different game. And finally, the last two reasons why I think you should be doing Bulgarian split squats are that number one, it's gonna fix any muscular imbalances between the two legs that you have been setting up from whatever messed up technique that you've been doing, I've been doing, we've all been doing forever, right? You're able to see really where those imbalances are and where those weak points are so you can address them. And then finally, hip explosiveness. This is one of the exercises where it's gonna teach you to get your hips underneath the bar to finish off the lift faster, which is gonna translate over to your deadlift, your squat, pretty much everything athletic. Never, ever, ever underestimate the benefit of having explosive hips when it comes to athletic endeavors or moving big, heavy things. Your butt is where the power is. Congratulations. So all of that to say, I really, really think that you should be doing them. However, most people are screwing them up. So I wanna go really quickly over a basic idea of how to do these so you guys can add them into your training and gain all the benefits that I just talked about. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is figure out the height of the box behind you, whether you're gonna stack a bumper plate, stick a barbell across, stick a bench behind you, whatever you're going to do. Here is the problem. If that set of bench or plates or whatever it is, is too high, then you're gonna limit your range of motion because you're gonna be kicking yourself in your own butt, which looks stupid. And yet conversely, if it is too low, then you're gonna rely too much on that opposite leg. You're not isolating the front one enough, and that is gonna be a problem as well because you really wanna be sticking all of that emphasis between your quad and your glute. So we're kind of looking at like a Goldilocks situation, so not so much here or here, right? Once you're sure that you have the rear foot at a good height for you, and you're able to do the movement without any restrictions, the next thing I want you to focus on is your descent. Now this is just like any other squat. I know it's gonna be much lighter than your other endeavors and variations, whatever it might be on the squat. However, on this, you're gonna really, really need to focus on your breathing and bracing because you're already in a compromised position. So when you're working that descent, I really want you with as much air as possible, brace down so that you can control that descent on the way down. Do not dive bomb this at all. You're going to need to go slow because it is about balance under load, which is a different game entirely. In order to do this, your first movement is going to have to be a hip hinge, very similar to doing a good morning because you're gonna to need to start creating some room some real estate for your body to start traveling down and since you're on one leg you're kind of limited as far as where you can go no really pushing your knees out to start the descent on this squat but once you do break at the hip i want you to focus on kind of your groin tailbone whatever you want to call it area and start trying to drop that straight down to the ground i don't want you to think about pushing your butt back like on a typical squat you're going straight down also when your leg is pushing I think the gym might blow up. The, the, those caves will stop the blast, right? I think, I think the gym might blow up. It's been fun, people. Might have to go. 
I guess so must go on. Anyway, so you're taking that kind of groin area and dropping it straight down to the ground after you broke your hips. And what I want you to do with your knee is focus on pushing it outward. Now, you're not gonna be able to push as far outward as you would when you have two legs, obviously, because it's gonna need to stay more straight up and down, much like pillars on a building, because that is the only thing that you have supporting weight. Now, your knee, just like on every other squat, is going to try to collapse in to shoot your butt back, to try to do something else with this weight, but you cannot let that happen. You really need to focus on going directly straight up and down. Which brings us to the ascent where you're bringing that bar back up, which is where things kind of get squirrely because a lot of that balance starts coming into play. Now, again, your knee is gonna try to collapse in, which is gonna put your butt back, which is gonna make you want to lean forward. That's exactly what a lot of people do on the walking lunge or step up. That is the opposite of what you do. I want you to continue to think about having your Iron Man symbol, your Batman symbol, your Superman symbol. Continue to fight that up with your chin down in a good neutral position. But that is the position you want to be holding. Do not fold over to take that barbell over the front of the middle of your foot. And then conversely, on the other hand, I also don't want you pushing backwards on that front leg. Some people have a tendency to do that, which means two things. Number one, you're using that rear leg, which isn't allowed. Secondly, you're taking the stress off of where we want the stress, so stop that. That back leg should just be there as kind of like a if you need it, now you are putting weight on it, do not get me wrong, but there's a difference between putting the focus on the front leg versus the back leg because you can absolutely use that back leg to cheat this and use it. Try to stay away from that as much as possible. Really want you guys to focus on using your quad and your glute. And finally, the third thing that I want you to consider when you're doing your ascent is your foot positioning and how you want to be putting pressure on. Now, I know a lot of people talk about in the squat, driving through your heels. I try not to tell people to do that. I don't think that's a good cue. What I try to tell people on the squat, and especially on this squat in particular, because you only have one foot on the ground, is to have three points of contact. Number one is going to be in your big toe. That's gonna to take care of the front side of your foot. The other side is going to be the outside edge of your foot, and then the last one is also gonna be heel. So you have three points of contact that you're trying to drive into that floor all at the same time. I'm really trying to root my foot into the ground, literally trying to grip the floor with my toes. That is going to do a ton to try to stabilize you as you're going up and weight and doing different things, because this thing's gonna get squirrely from time to time. And if you do not, consider using three points contact on that foot if you're just pushing with your heel, you're gonna spend a lot more time falling over than you need to. All right, so that was the what, now we move on to the how because I wanna talk to you guys about the progression. So you guys obviously need to work into this. You can't just throw like 315 on your back and give this a whirl. That's not going to, well, get, send me the video. Don't send me the video, I'm not trying to get sued, but send me the video. So the very first progression that I tell you to do is just hold on to the side of a squat rack, get your foot elevated to good height, work that thing out, and just do some body weight ones holding onto the rack. Once you don't need to hold on the rack anymore, just stick your hands out in front of you and do them body weight on their own. I know for some people this is gonna seem very, very elementary. However, we are all different levels of coordinated. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Nick. But I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you guys are gonna pick up that body weight variation very quickly. So the next progression is moving on to a single dumbbell. Now, I want you to keep that dumbbell on the same side that you'll be using the leg for. So if you're squatting with your right leg, you hold the dumbbell in your right hand. If you're squatting with your left leg, I hope you understand. Anyway, this can do a lot to help the instability, which is going to help you with trying to learn that balance and how to push onto the three points of your foot. Once you have the one dumbbell down, then it is time to move on to two dumbbells, which is actually gonna make you more stable because you're balanced. However, you are moving more load, which is ideally where you're trying to move with this anyway, so it's a natural progression. You should move on to that. Once you have those down, then you move on to the barbell variation, which I think is so much better than any of those dumbbell variations. However, I wouldn't jump right into that if you've never done this before because it gets kind of dicey and I don't wanna see anyone die. But then if you're a cool guy like, all of us once you can do the barbell ones then you throw the ssb on and that's kind of like riding in first class just because there's pads and your arms don't cramp up from being out here so if you don't have an ssb try with those it's definitely much nicer all right so anyway guys i hope that helps you out i hope you guys start adding the bulgarian split squat into your routine it's going to help you fix any muscle imbalances that you might have work on your knees collapsing it's going to up your squat it's going to up your deadlift it is going to help your soul it is such a great exercise i really really hope you guys take my advice and start using it other things are going on guys Coach Joe and I just decided on the date for the Lion State Classic Strongman Competition, the second annual. I'm very, very stoked about it. That will be April 13th this year in Colmar, PA. So if you guys do not know how a strongman competition works, if you are the first one to sign up, you are the last one to go. So you get to see how many deadlifts everyone did. So you need to do only the required number of deadlifts to win the event. So it always helps you sign up first, not to mention the fact that it sold out last year, it's gonna sell out this year. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna throw up a link to the Lions Den Elite Training right now. I am not sure if we're ready to take on people yet, but just to yeah, tell you guys where it's gonna be, get the information, see how far it's gonna be, travel, hotel information, all that kind of stuff will be coming up. 
but I really, really do appreciate you guys. I hope to see a bunch of you guys there, and I really hope this video helped you guys out. I will catch up with you later in the week. Until I do, go out to something amazing realize. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then. Hey guys, real fast. I'm sorry to be adding this one to another video, but guys, if you do not end up watching the next video about the question of the week, I really need suggestions for what events you would like to see in a strongman competition. So in the description box down below, if you were the boss for a day and you could absolutely do any strongman event that you possibly wanted in competition, money is not an option, any piece of equipment, anything you possibly do, let me know, be as specific as possible, because those events are gonna be chosen for the Lion's Day Classic, so you guys can have, we're gonna let the athletes kind of run this thing and make it exactly what they want. So, if you guys are interested in participating or you are part of Strongman World, and you have always wanted to do a certain type of thing, leave in the comment section down below, because we're gonna to try to make those as possible as we can. Thank you guys very much for your input. This helps me so much.